text, right? Okay. Now, um, now that you've gone through that list, what do you do with that list? Well, you've got this list with crossed out words. What do you do with the rest of the words? Because sometimes your parents, your friends have learned these words and they can tell you a story. Why is a story good? You can imagine it. them using the word and what you are not associated with it. Yeah. We are programmed to have, when someone says, once upon a time, there's a part of our brain that lights up. <laughs> Why? Think of the time before, what's that? Oh, no, no, let's say that yesterday I went to the beach. Okay, right. We are programmed because we were cave people. I mean, people behind us. Did they have school? Did they have books? How did they learn? From each other, and it was from stories. I remember Grandpa told me that when we're near this tall tree, it's not a good place. <laughs> These things fly around and they attack you. Yeah, we call them bees, but they didn't know the name. So, yes, he said, the things that fly around and attack you are near that tree. So, they would get that. So, that's why I tell you the story about the lake. Because I think it's clear in your mind that Steve had some time where he just did SAT. Now, it takes a lot of discipline for you guys to do that. And you don't have the nine months that I had. Right. Because I didn't take that test until, let's see, it was like, this test was in May 74, and I took it May 75. So, I mean, I had a lot of time. And generally, the vocabulary goes up through a lot of exposure. There are about 95 problems in math. I think I can demonstrate that. If I tell you to find that volume, if this side is seven and that side's seven, would you be able to do it? Yes. Okay, that's good. Now, is that really that much different from that problem? It's basically the same problem. That's what I mean. If I teach you the trick on that, or if you discover the trick from one in the other people, you just got one of the ways out of the way. And you're ready for the test. And that's what I want you guys to be, ready for the test. Because then once it's out of the way, you can work on those other keys. How much of a language can you, uh, uh, who does not speak another language? You, you don't have to learn, if you're, if you're embarrassed, that's okay. Can you learn enough of a language, enough vocabulary to ask questions? Yeah, yeah you could. You have that, uh, good, you have that. So make that a priority that I'm suggesting. You want to get into a good school, get that language. And then get some experience linked to that language. I don't know, what language you want to learn? I kind of have to learn Hebrew. Hebrew, cool. Okay, I was oh, this is a hard one, boy. I was going to say, go down to a soup kitchen where they're serving to people who speak Hebrew. But there's some old people on the beach. I don't know. It may not be the most fun thing, but, you know, you kind of, you know, whatever you say, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, try, use that list to try to build your portfolio to get in. All right, now, other tip. How many hours do we have in this course? Totally in class? 15, okay. Well, some of you are taking the class, the what, December? Is that when you guys are taking? And will you have another chance after that? 
Maybe not, but if you oh, can, yeah. great, good. This is good practice. Um, you have, there, there, there's actually shown, I guess you guys know, can you improve just by taking the test like three times? Yeah. No I studying at all. Right, you didn't really study. What happens is you become really good at being able to fill in dots. So it goes faster, so you have more time at the end. So you go back and you check. Oh, simple, good. We talked about a half hour a day. What did we say? Yeah, yeah it added, sort of. Let, let's calculate that out. Let's do six days. So that gave us three hours per week. And so if you did this for four weeks, we'd have 12 extra hours of study. So it sort of like almost doubles the impact. Because I understand some kids who take this course, or some young people who attempt to raise their score, they come to here and the only work they do is they open this up or they take these little tests or they listen here. They don't look at the book any other way. And, you know, do their scores go up a lot? I mean, it, it's, there's nothing magic here. It's exposing your face, or sorry, brain, to lots of words. When you see a word like a vuncular, a vunk, you are. What's it look like? Uncle. Avuncular is an adult who is like an uncle. Is he? A, is this a positive word? Yeah. I hope so. My uncle was always nice to me. <laughs> okay. okay. So you talk about I got some avuncular advice. From, from someone sorry, who's like older, them. right? Uh, what, 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 is that positive advice? Yeah. Okay, so that's the emotion I want you to feel. I want you, when you see these words, to get an emotion. It's either, yeah, right? <laughs> or, that's not something I want. Or, if it's a neutral word, like, I don't know. <laughs> well, try to build. Big tip. Big tip. How do you change? That's the question. How do you change? So, the most important thing I can tell you is a guy named Dan. There's a company who wants to eventually, I don't know, have a million bucks. Anybody? A million bucks. You want a million bucks? Yeah, that would be good. Okay. Okay. So, learn that. Because each one of you could have a million bucks if you follow his advice. Hmm. There's something called fast company. Um, it's not that you're making the money fast, but you're learning quickly. And they actually have a uh, YouTube. <laughs> cool. And he has like six videos. And one of them talks about how do you change. Because that's one way you make money. You, or you make anything happen in your life that's different. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting new results. The definition of... Okay. So, he basically said, if you tell someone, let's say you're trying to change somebody, this is how to change. And in effect, that's what you're trying to do yourself. You're trying to change something in yourself from being not so good on the SAT to being great on the SAT, okay? To being, from being a person without a college acceptance to with a college acceptance. So you don't change people by presenting information, by educating them. I mean, they've been trying to teach my mom, okay, don't smoke because it's bad for your health. Look at all these studies, right? In England, they put a picture of someone's mouth 
it, it says like cigarettes here, but two thirds of the box has this really ugly close up view of a mouth that's been eaten away. You can't see the cheek. That's how, and the person's still smoking, you know. <laughs> God, it was awful. And they put that photo of someone trying to smoke with a big hole here. You could see the inside of the mouth. That's how bad their, their um, cancer was. And that was the photo on the cigarette. And on the side it says, cigarettes cause cancer. But they had a picture. So. This is what Dan Heath says. If you're trying to change something in yourself or in another person, don't try to educate them. Help them to see it, because we're very visual. So then they can feel it, and you get the energy to change. They say, you know, how many people does it take to change a light bulb? None. You have to wait for the light bulb to want to change itself. 